Hi everybody and welcome, it's Scarlet Pete here on my self-sufficiency channel and we're in the pigsty. Well it is a pigsty now. The pigs have just arrived, we've removed the barbaric nose rings and uh, they're just exploring and they're really quite wild at the moment. They're not used to kind, gentle touch so we've got to get them used to us now. They've got their first amount of food brought in for them, which is potato peels, pumpkin peels, pumpkin seeds, eggs, and I think there's some water mixed in it as well with it, so they can get used to eating there. So how on earth are we going to tame these pigs, you might think? Well, it's going to be quite easy, actually. Pigs love food. So what we're going to do is every time they come to eat, we'll stand in the way of the dish. So they'll get fed there. We'll stand. So they have to push by our legs the first day or two. They'll just push by our legs and touch our legs. We'll always be in the way at feed time for them. And then as they eat, we'll just gently rub the backs, touch their backs. First day, they'll probably run a mile when we touch them, but food will pull them back again. So that's how it goes. Rubbing legs first, they rub our legs, touching their backs gently. And then the touch develops from us then into a bit of a rub which they'll probably start to like and then it turns into an itch and a scrub and that's how a friendship begins with pigs they'll do anything for a belly rub and afterwards they'll start lying down having a rub liking tickles coming and rubbing against you so that's how we do it now this area is ready to be electrified but they've had such a hellish start in life we're not going to put the electric fencing up today it's big enough shock being picked up from the concrete cell they were in, having the nose rings taken out, having them put in in the first place must have been horrendous, just a bent piece of sharpened wire that that person had put in their noses. We had to hold them down and remove that today from them. Luckily that was healed and it was more like an earring being in so we just had to undo it and pull it out. There was no blood left. So now the next step is putting the electric fence wire up around the fencing we've got here so that they will learn that if they push on the electric fence wire they won't have anywhere to go. Normally if you just put an electric fence wire up they'd get a shock and they'd dart straight forwards but here the whole fencing area will be reinforced with the electric fence wire so they will touch the wire, get a shock, go forwards touch the solid fence still getting a shock and realize the only way to prevent a shock is by going backwards they'll only need to touch it maybe three times four times and they'll learn not to go anywhere near the wire they won't want to shoot forwards they'll always go back from it so then our end of the deal is making sure that wire is always um, clear from weeds and digging that they will do so that the strength of the electricity is always at its highest because it's not fair on the pigs one day for it to be a big shock another day for it to be a little shock because then they'll try and outwit the wire and they'll go to it and they'll go well it wasn't that strong a boast yesterday from it so they'll try again they'll go through and it was like oh it didn't hurt then the next day they'll get a shock so we've got to be very consistent and make sure that fence is always at full power so they get a few nasty shocks and never want to repeat it that's me there, the shadow. Hello. No, oh, I can touch a pig. Strokey, strokey, strokey. <laughs> now what else do these pigs need? They need shelter. So we've got a little bit of shelter up the corner for them. What we're going to do is put a cage that's open both ends. So they have to go through the cage and then into the shelter. So then when we need to catch them to move them from this area, it would be quite natural for them to go into the cage because that would mean their bedroom. And then we'll just close the one end of it. It's all about desensitizing them to things that would normally make them panic. We'd maybe feed them some goodies in the cage before we close them in and then close them in with some goodies and then open it again. And then in the future we often house them in um, horse trailers, sheep trailers, so that going in the sheep trailer they get some food and it's not a stress then to be moved around the place. These are large white pigs, they've got upright ears rather than ones that cover their eyes. So that means they're going to be more willing to go and explore because they can see through those ears, they can see out. If they've got dropped ears or what's it called? What's the word for it? Lop, that's the word, a lop ear. They don't see where they could end up. So they're not so interested in escaping. But as these have pricked ears, they're going to want to explore. They're going to be really nice characters by the look of them. 
They're hungry, look. So what are they going to eat? They're going to eat potato peels, eggs, grass, weeds, pumpkins, pumpkin seeds, whole potatoes. The more vegetation we can give them, the better, because a pig naturally in the real world would go foraging and digging greenery and destroying greenery. They wouldn't go really into the feed stores and help themselves. Well, they would if they could, but in the wild, they would go along and forage from fields and dig and grub around. So that's what we're going to emulate, because if you feed your pigs on grains, you're giving them an unnatural diet and their meats then become poisonous and toxic to humans, as in they become rich with omega-6s. And what we want is an omega-3, omega-6 balance in the pig's meat. And yes, these are, for us, meat, or their babies are, because we've got a male and a female there. So what might happen is the boy will hang around to do his job and get the lady pregnant, and then he may be going into the freezer first. Now, for people that don't eat meat, that might be a very uncomfortable thought, but you have to take responsibility. If you're a meat eater, isn't it better for me to know how these pigs have been handled and reared, give them a good life, and then a humane end where I'm in control and I don't allow anyone to hurt them or herd them around or poke them and prod them, and they have no idea what's coming to them. It happens on the farm. It's quick, swift, and hidden from them. Rather than being commercially reared, fed en masse with a lot of other pigs in a quite a stressful environment, um, they would then have to, on their final days, be starved for one or two days. So in an area with a lot of pigs, that would then cause quite a lot of stress. They would then be loaded up into a trailer and driven a few miles or a few, quite a few miles sometimes, to the nearest slaughterhouse. They would hear and smell what was going on. They would be unloaded and put into lairage for overnight. The lairage is where they keep them. So they would have water and they would stay overnight and then they'd be dispatched. But that's commercial. That's how they're reared by commercial farmers and dispatched. And not necessarily what I want from my meat. I want to know who's handled them, how they were fed, how they've been looked after, what life quality they've had, and a life at the end, how it was happened, that we are responsible for. And therefore, if we've done that, we've taken their lives from them, we then make sure we waste nothing. Everything is used from the pig except for the squeak, is what um, Seymour used to say. He wrote a lot of great books in the old days on self-sufficiency. And that really is it. Everything in a pig can be used. Bristles are used for hairbrushes. Um, skin is used for shoes and gloves. Crackling from the ears. Uh, lard can be used to cook with or used for um, soap making. The head is made into a head cheese and brawn. The feet are made into trotters in aspic jelly. Every single part, whether it's ham, bacon or pork or crackling or lard or soap, every bit of them is used before we take their lives. It, it, we have to think very seriously what we're going to do with them. You can't waste. You can't waste what you've got there. You've got to respect what you're taking from them. And that's what it is being a meat eater. We're taking a life and we're going to eat them. Now, if you're vegetarian, you don't need to do that. No, that's fine. That's your choice. But we are a meat-eating family, so we choose to do it this way. So we're responsible for the whole process and choose very carefully what we do. So I hope this chat has been informative and useful to you. And um, I, maybe I should do another video soon on keeping them exactly what you need to know. The next stage. This has just been a quick overview and a quick chat. So stay along with the pigs. We think we're going to call them Pinky and Perky. Let me know what you think of the names in the comments. Stay with their journey and see how it goes. Thanks ever so much for watching as always. Stay well, take care, like, subscribe and share please and give us a comment and definitely please give us a thumbs up. Bye bye.